Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. Karen calls my company mad her van from another company won't start. Expects to use our company's roadside assurance that's for our customers only. Gets put in her place by me and my boss. The second story. One of the worst entitled clients who was caught by karma after all. The third story. Karen resents that she's been waiting for two hours and she should be the first employees puts her in her place. The first story is... Another entitled Karen from the world of accessible van rentals. This happened a few months ago, and I was reminded of it by my husband, who told me I should post it. This one is a doozy. I work graveyard while working on my degree, which I graduate in May, thank the Lord. In case you haven't read any other posts I've made, I work for an accessible van company. My position as well as all our positions are remote. We aren't a huge company, but not small by any means. All of our calls are recorded, so it makes me laugh when people try to pull their bull SH, and I remind them these calls are recorded. The company's owner as well as my supervisor have a huge policy that people can't bully us all because they're on the phone, and let me tell you they try. We offer roadside assistance for our customers. Keep that in mind, our customers. We can unlock a vehicle, dispatch a mechanic, anything that might require roadside assistance. Okay, now that I've painted a picture onto our crazy Karen story, it was her neighbor who called in for her. Then she gets on the line. We'll call him Dumb Neighbor DN and her B-Face Karen B-Face. Something also to note, I'm a veteran disabled combat veteran who was medically retired because of my injuries. This matters in this story. Me, thank you for calling blank blank. My name is Have a Ducky. How may I help you? DN, yes, my neighbor's van won't start and she needs to get her son to the hospital. Me thinking hospital, it's 4 a.m. Oh no, I hope it's not an emergency. Okay, what's her license plate number and her name? DN, her name is BK, and the plate is FL Plates 020202. Me, sir, that's not a plate of any vehicles. DN, I can hear BK in the background. I own the van. She owns the vehicle. Something to note, once the van's sold, it's no longer our responsibility. Like any used vehicle place, unless it's an agreed upon warranty. Me, sir, I honestly don't know what I can do for her except look on GPS and still see if we have that van on there. I need to look her up first to figure out what van she had. Click, click, typing. Um, sir, we don't have a customer by that. Is it under someone else, possibly? DN, relating this to BK. She said no, it's under her name. Me, sir, I can assure you that her name is not in here, and we didn't sell her any van. BK, ma'am, I did get my van from you. Name's our competitor. I need to get my son to the VA. Of course, I understand that VA appointments are a B to get if missed. I'm thinking of different ways as she's going off about how I can help her. Me. Ma'am, we're not that company, but I know on our vans we have a disable switch, under the dash by the e-brake. Maybe they do too? She, I'm assuming, looks and says no. Me. Okay then, ma'am. You need to contact wherever you got the van. BK. I did. They're not open and don't have a roadside assistance department. I don't understand. You're roadside assistance for accessible vans, and I need to get my son to his VA appointment. You wouldn't understand. Me. Actually, ma'am, I understand all too well, as I'm a disabled veteran myself. I know it's hard to sometimes get another appointment in a timely manner with the VA. BK. My son's an injured combat veteran, and you're a woman. You wouldn't understand what he's going through. Me. Ma'am. I'm also an injured, healing physically now, far from mentally, combat veteran as well. I do understand, and I want to help in any way I can within my power. BK. You can get someone out here to fix my vehicle. Me. I can't do that, unfortunately, as you did not get your van from us. BK. Then what good are you? This is BS. She hangs up. I think, oh well, I tried. I take my headset off and go back to painting when I see another call coming through. And who does my caller ID show? BK. I facepalm. Okay, so this happens a lot, as we have a few numbers, but are all listed to my company. Me. Thank you for calling Spiel. BK. Ugh, not you again. You're incompetent. I want a manager. Me. I'm sorry, but seeing as it's 0410, there is no one else on. BK. Get me someone now. Me. No, I will not be doing that. And actually, I'm going to be disconnecting this call. I promptly hung up. She called back eight more times, getting me all eight times. 
On the 8th call, she said she was going to complain to the Better Business Bureau about us. I told her to please do so, as I can't do something for her that's literally out of my control. BK, you're a real B, you know that? Me, you too, ma'am, and considering all the time you spent insulting me on the phone, you could have called someone to help out. Have a great morning. Click. Of course, when she called when we were open, and my boss, who I already forwarded to listen to the call, BK said she wanted me fired. My awesome boss told her she was out of line as well as crazy. BK, she made good on the Better Business Bureau call. They sent an inquiry, and nothing came of it. The second story is... Old lady in a walker makes everyone miserable. She later gets fined. Our regular clientele at the theater was noticeably different from the norm. About 75% of our customers were about 50 and older. Maybe it was the fact that we carried a lot of independent movies. Maybe it was because we were a little cheaper than the mainstream theaters. Or maybe it was because the owner was a senior citizen himself. But I digress. As my usual position was that of an usher, I often found myself tending to some of the elderly customers who couldn't get around as easily as some of the others. I understood this was usually happy to assist, and would often do so without a complaint. That is except for one old lady in a walker. This lady had to be somewhere in her 80s, and she had this old worn out walker that nearly served as a warning that she was approaching as you could hear it scraping across the concrete before she came into the theater. Subtle enough for the untrained ear to notice, but the very sound possessed the seeds of chaos and discord. Miss Walker, as we shall call her, would always need assistance whenever she came in. You walk her to the auditorium, you had to help her to her seat. If she bought concessions, you had to carry her food. You had to walk her to the restroom if she had to go. And after the movie had ended, you had to call her a cab to get home. It wouldn't be so bad if not for the fact that she was usually barking at you. If she felt you weren't doing it the way she felt was the correct way. To this day, I can still hear her saying, No, you're doing it wrong in a voice that can only be described as an 80-year-old Patty or Selma from The Simpsons. Nine times out of ten, if I was on a shift when she showed up, I was the one who got stuck helping her, because I knew how to assist her, and even then she would still get snippy. Some incidents that stand out involve one time she was fussing at me from the moment she walked in the lobby, and continued to do so as I walked her to the restroom, and then to her seat as I carried her food. After that was over, I ended up scaring a few co-workers when I stormed back out into the lobby, and proceeded to take out my frustrations on an inflatable punching bag that was promoting the Three Stooges movie, giving you a general time frame of when this took place. Another time I was trying to get Miss Walker to her seat, but the movie had already started, and she was being pretty loud. I was trying to shush her when she bumped her head on the seat in front of her. She didn't even hit it hard enough to leave a bruise. But the way she was acting, you'd think she had given herself a concussion. Needless to say, she didn't want to see her movie, and asked us to call her a cab to go home. At least it only meant we have to deal with her for a grand total of 15 minutes that day. There was another day after her movie had ended, and she had been in a particularly bad mood. She asked me to call her a cab. As I'm trying to give the cab company our location, she yelled at me saying, No, you're doing it wrong. They don't speak English that well. They won't understand. I then heard the cab company say, Uh, sorry, wrong number. And they hung up on me. Bear in mind they said the company name when they answered the phone. I had to call back two more times, and was practically pleading with them before they finally agreed to come get her. She was still fussing the whole time. Miss Walker lived in an assisted living facility a block away from the theater. One of my coworkers also lived in the facility, as she helped attend to her ailing mother. She told me about how one day around 5am, everyone was forced to evacuate the building when the fire alarm went off. As it turned out, Miss Walker had gone downstairs to check her mail, and pulled the alarm while waiting for the elevator to take her back up. Her reasoning? The elevator was taking too long, and she thought the alarm would make it move faster instead. She got stuck with a fine, and everyone in the building now hated her. Another old lady from the facility later corroborated the story when I asked her about it. I saw her cringe when I motioned her name. Some time before I quit, I noticed she had replaced her old walker for one with wheels that made a lot less noise. I pitied my coworkers, since they no longer had a warning for her arrival. And the last story is... Karen wants to be treated in hospital before a three-day-old baby. I gave birth to my daughter on Tuesday, then were released Thursday. On Thursday, we saw our pediatrician after being released from the hospital. Turns out my daughter's Billy Rubin, jaundice levels were high-ish. She was born at 37 weeks due to me having preeclampsia, so she's technically early to the doctors. So they're being precocious and checking her levels don't get into a dangerous level. Since Thursday, we've had to go to the pediatrician slash hospital on the weekend since doctor's offices are closed to get her blood drawn to keep checking. 
On Saturday, we had a doctor's order prescription to have her blood drawn at the lab, but had to be taken and wait in the ER. There were three to four people sitting in the ER when we arrived. Get checked in, my fiance and I sit, waiting to be registered. The ER desk worker recognized us from the other day, I guess from when I was in the hospital giving birth, and asked about us and my daughter. How she is, how many days she is, why she's here, etc. I'd also like to point out my daughter's extremely quiet for a newborn as well. Literally never made a peep in the waiting room. The registration woman comes out with that rolling cart not even two minutes later, walks over to us and begins the process, when old lady Karen pipes up, who is on the other side of the woman. I've been waiting two hours, check me in first. One that has to be completely false due to how quickly the woman came out to us and how dead the ER currently was. Two, she literally cut that woman off and she's asking us questions, which is rude regardless. Don't get me wrong, I can understand it being annoying someone getting attention before you, when you were there first, but there are nicer and politer ways to going about it. The registration woman gave the woman a look, then to me sympathetically. My daughter wasn't fussy or anything so I had no problem waiting. Gave her a small nod as if to say I understand. Then the woman began checking in Karen. Only Karen didn't speak to the woman, only shoved her paperwork into the woman's hand and sat quietly again. Once the registration woman was done, I think just confirming certain things due to her not needing anything from Karen, checked us in, thanked both my party and the woman, to which of course my fiancé and I thanked her back out of politeness. Karen glared over at the worker and us. After about 15 to 20 minutes, Karen told, not asked, told a worker to tell the ER receptionist she's been waiting two hours and to call the lab technician down again. The ER receptionist gets the message from the passing worker, gives Karen a look, and proceeds to call or page the lab again while I make a slightly annoyed uh-huh sound. After a moment, the receptionist turned to my fiancé and I, apologizing to us saying the technician would be down in a moment, and that on Saturdays they only have one blood technician. A few minutes later, the very lovely technician came down and immediately came to us, helping us gather our stuff out of kindness. The receptionist made some sort of comment about Karen is also getting a lab done, to which the tech made an ah kind of sound. The feeling I got was the receptionist told the tech on the phone about Karen causing issues and that an infant was waiting. Well good, you can follow us. My fiance and I took an extra second to get the car seat picked up, diaper bag, etc. So Karen had a moment to stand with the tech who was complimenting us on our daughter, to which Karen said nicely but slightly smug, yeah, what a cute baby. We took a short walk to the lab area Karen speed walking past us, talking to the tech about how she doesn't even understand why she's here. She could be doing other things on a Saturday. She's been waiting two hours, etc. While the tech is nicely smiling and agreeing, apologizing she's the only blood technician on the weekends. We approach the room, to which the tech turns, smiles smugly and tells Karen, Ma'am, you can have a seat right here. Y'all can come right inside. Karen, what? Yes, ma'am, the seat's right here. We'll be done in just a minute. Karen huffed, giving my again four-day-old baby a look, as if it's her fault Karen was a complete and utter pain in the A, making the receptionist and tech want to make her life even harder. Again, my daughter hasn't made a sound and was perfectly fine. Karen easily could have gone before us, and both of us were here for blood to be drawn. But I guess Karen had to wait even longer due to her sucky attitude towards staff. Be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and have a good day.